to 70% of small businesses fail in the first few years. Typically, this is because although traders may be experts in their own fields, they're less good at the business side of business, dealing with people, planning and paperwork. Getting the organisational side of a business spot on, like getting the right insurance and not paying for cover you don't need, can be difficult, especially without support. Well, to discuss these issues, I'm joined in the studio by Daryl Sansom, Managing Director of AXA Business Insurance, part of the AXA Group, the world's largest insurer in terms of total assets. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to The Business Debate. Daryl, welcome to the business debate. Pleasure to be here. Firstly, in what ways do smaller businesses get tripped up, perhaps in running the business side of a business? Yeah, I mean, that's a fair point. I mean, most businesses are great at what it is they're in business to do, so a builder or a plumber. Uh, but what they're not good at is the, is the hurdles that face a business. So whether that's cash flow, uh, advice around employment law, those kind of things are things that people tend to find difficult and they're the things that trip them up. And there isn't a great deal of support necessarily, is there, especially for sole traders. Where can they go for support? Yeah, I think the key thing is uh, the bigger a business gets, the more p specialists they have in their business to help support that kind of conversation. Uh, if you're a one or a two person business, you know, you kind of have to be the jack of all trades. And whilst there is a variety of information out there, it's sometimes difficult to pinpoint just one place to go. So that's why we've launched something called Business Guardian Angel to try and overcome that challenge. And what is that? It's effectively uh, an online website that's free to anyone. Um, it gives people the ability to get that advice around HR, cash flow, some of the challenges that businesses face, particularly in those early years where they're trying to get on their feet, um, and it gives them the ability to try and diagnose or engage and solve those problems. And I've had a look at it, it's actually not as dry as it sounds, there's lots of pictures, lots of blogs. Yeah, I mean the, the days of the old dry sort of... Uh, you know, book type uh, communication doesn't work. So stuff like videos and that kind of stuff are things that resonate now with customers and are sort of bite size usable. It is very important, isn't it, to communicate with your customers in a way that they can absorb? Yeah. I think if you look at modern technology nowadays, there's a whole ream of ways in which you can communicate. And what we try and do is reflect that in the way that we engage with our customers. So whether that is YouTube or type videos or whether that is gamification, so getting a bit of competitive edge and trying to learn that way, it's always more engaging and people like that a lot better than traditional means. Now, what are the typical bits of insurance that perhaps an SME wouldn't need but they would traditionally have bought? And surely, isn't it in your interest to sell them as much insurance as you can? Uh, it's in our interest for businesses to flourish. So I, I go back to the cash flow observation earlier. What we don't want to do is put a business in a position where they can no longer trade. So typically, if you take a florist, Traditionally, we would have sold a whole ream of covers in a package policy, but a florist's real challenges are people coming into the shop and perhaps tripping over or slipping on the water, and that lovely glass frontage that allows them to display their wares. And they don't need maybe stock insurance because all their stock is dead. Yeah, by six absolutely. You know, it's, it's in the bin come six o'clock. And even when a claim is settled, it yeah. can take a very long time to be paid, can't it? By which time, say someone's had their tools stolen, they could have gone out of business. What are you doing about that? Yeah, the key thing is it's appropriate that we make sure that people have the ability to continue to trade when the worst happens. So actually getting that claim paid quickly is a key challenge. So we've now got a process in place for the simple claims. You can get your claim paid in a couple of hours. We talk about customer power, don't we? People are much more informed. They read uh, things on the internet. But business insurance can still be a bit impenetrable, can't it? Yeah, historically it's been very terminology-led, been quite complex. You know, what is public liability? What is professional indemnity? What we're trying to do, and the feedback we get from our customers, is to make that journey simple, to talk in the customer's language. You know, so public liability is about, you know, you doing injury to the public. It's that simple. Now, still 80 to 90% of businesses prefer to buy their insurance through a broker. Why yeah. is that? I think the larger a business gets, the more complex those needs become. And there's a certain inevitability that that kind of face-to-face -face advice is still required. I think for the smaller businesses, and if you look at recent data monitor research, actually a lot of one, two-person businesses are using direct and digital means if you can create the right journey, if you can make it simple, if you can give them the confidence, and that's working really well for them. 
Excellent stuff. Well, Daryl Sansom, thank you very much. Pleasure.